loud. There we go. Right. So it's on record. Uh, thank you again. And if you're watching back, thank you. Make sure that you're somewhere comfortable, not too hot, not too cold. Got a drink, as everybody here hopefully has now too. And uh, we're going to begin by thinking about something that you want to work towards, a goal, shall we say, but a specific goal. So not just earn more money, lose weight. I want you to think about a figure, something that you know you can achieve, but it also makes you feel that fear because we all have that fear when we're stepping out of our comfort zone, but we need to embrace that fear to achieve, to push ourselves safely, but it's not always comfortable. It's not always easy. And we have that fear to protect us. Fear is a natural response to danger, but that doesn't mean the fear that we're feeling is protecting us from danger. It can be um, heightened in our mind. It can increase the anxiety and it can actually hold us back. So today we're going to get rid of that fear holding us back and work towards that goal. So I'd like you to, with that goal, in your mind, using the chat box, put a number from one to 10. One, feeling like there's no way I can achieve this goal. It's too scary. I want to, but I can't do it. And 10, feeling absolutely 100% I'm doing it. I'm getting started as soon as this call is over. So if you put that number from one to 10 in the chat box, about how you feel towards this goal. And make sure it is big enough, this goal, that you do feel like something is going to have to change for you to achieve it. Because we often hold ourselves smaller. We're scared of stepping out. So we pick something that we know we can achieve. So it's important to have that goal that we have a little bit of fear towards. Because it's natural and it's a natural response. And what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to hypnotise you. If I think most people here have experienced hypnosis before, but I, I, I'm not sure if Becky has. I'm not sure about Dawn. Anyway, if you haven't experienced hypnosis before, I'd just like you to go with the session. If you have experienced hypnosis before, I'd like you to just go with the session. Allow me to guide you and enjoy it. It will be wonderful. It's an intense feeling of relaxation. Um, it's an opportunity for you to switch off, an opportunity for you to take this time for yourself to work towards your goals. You don't have to do anything. NLP, but not hypnosis, thank you. Oh, perfect, lovely. Um, I think they're very similar. I haven't studied NLP, but I know NLP is incorporated into the hypnosis that we do. Right, so everybody's giving their numbers in, in the chat box. It's nice to see we've got some fairly confident people in the room and some other people who have picked things that do feel scary for them. And at the end of the session, those numbers will increase and your confidence will increase and you will be ready to go out there towards your desires, towards your goals with a new sense of freedom. Um, yeah. So let's begin, I guess. There's no point in talking about it. Let's make the changes necessary. And as it's a group, I'm not speaking to anybody directly, but you will be allowing your own imagination to create the images. It's a collaboration of the imagination hypnosis. And when I ask you to see something, or feel something, it doesn't have to be perfect. So some people worry that they can't visualize very well. I'm not asking you to see it picture perfect like a photograph, but if I said, can you picture an apple? I think you would be able to see that now because if I say something, the mind automatically creates that picture and you can probably see an apple that's either red or green. You might not be able to see every single detail, but as you start thinking about it now and I ask you to see where it is in the room and if it's in a fruit bowl or in the supermarket or where it is, you can start to create these images. So you do have this ability to visualize and that's what we're going to be working with today. So if you make sure you're sitting comfortably and you're ready to begin, I'd like to begin. So both feet on the floor, hands comfortably, not crossed, relaxed. Take a nice deep breath 
in. And as you inhale, feel positivity flowing through you and exhale, allowing a sense of relaxation to go down through your body all the way from the top of your head, through your shoulders. We carry a lot of tension in our shoulders all the way down to our feet. And on this next in-breath, start to notice that deepening sensation of the breathing. And as you exhale, allow your eyes to close. Allow your eyes to close as quickly as you're willing to enter a profound state of relaxation, taking this time for you. Switching off from the outside world, but aware, aware of the chair beneath you, supporting you, aware of the sounds in the room around you. Thoughts, feelings, things you may not have noticed before, turning your attention inwards. And with the sound of my voice guiding you, allow yourself to enter a deeper state of relaxation, noticing your eyes feeling heavy. You could open them if you wish to, but you don't because this sensation is wonderful. Embrace it, taking this time for you and allow that relaxation to go down through your face. Notice your jaw, let go of any tension you've been holding your tongue feeling heavy in your mouth and then your shoulders like a massage, relaxing deeper and deeper. The deeper you go, the better it feels all the way down through your body, noticing your legs below you, beneath you, supporting you, releasing any tension in your hips all the way down to your feet. Notice them there, relaxed, but grounded. Notice the earth below you and that connection that you have, that connection that we all have with one another. We're all on the same planet. We're all in this same moment in time together, but you are experiencing a unique state of hypnosis, allowing yourself to drift deeper now, enjoying this feeling, relax, relaxation, the more relaxed you feel, the deeper you go. Still noticing those sensations, but allowing your mind to switch off because you have that conscious awareness, the part of our mind that's constantly creating self-talk, focusing on details. It has an amazing ability to focus on the things that we don't necessarily want to. When we're learning a skill, for instance, we use our conscious mind to focus, to learn, and then we pass it to the subconscious mind. And it holds all of the skills, all of the thoughts, and all of the feelings from our past experiences, and also feelings towards the future. We carry with us anxieties too, but we can speak directly to that subconscious mind and we can allow greater clarity towards what we truly desire. So whilst you're enjoying this moment, I would like you to picture that part of your subconscious mind, a part that runs as a protective mechanism and its intention has always been good, a good intention, one to keep you well but its intention becomes intensified and can hold you back. I would like you to think of that part as a faithful guard dog. You bought him as a puppy, you trained him up to bark at intruders, but sometimes that guard dog becomes overprotective and he barks at everything, those you love, the people that you want to allow into your home. So speaking directly now to your subconscious mind, I'd like to establish a form of communication, an unconscious form of communication. Like when you're in conversation and you agree with someone, you can verbally say, I agree. Or you also subconsciously allow your head to nod to show willingness, acceptance, agreement. So speaking directly to your subconscious mind, I would like it to allow a signal to occur. 
any signal, a nod of the head, a twitch of the finger. It will be unique to you and allow your subconscious mind to make these decisions as I guide you through this. And speaking directly to that part that runs the protective mechanism that's been holding you back, creating that fear that you've been feeling, that fear that will be removed forever. I'd like that part to identify what its positive intention has been and I'd like it to see all of the reasons that it has been running as protective as it has been for you. And it's unique how that part affects you. There is no wrong or right answer. It may be barking at every single person that walks past your house or just a few, and that's okay. And after this session, it will be allowed to relax and retire and live in a happy home as part of a happy family. And I'd like to ask that part to go to the creative resources in your mind. And I'd like you to know that there's an infinite number of possibilities, possibilities that fill you with hope, with joy, and with freedom. Possibilities away from this useless and unnecessary fear that has been built up over time, holding you back. And all of those possibilities are there within your creative mind because your mind is powerful and you have the opportunities to take these opportunities and you will excel at everything that you choose to put your mind to. It's just allowing yourself the freedom to grasp it, run with it, fly with it to freedom. And whilst your mind, your subconscious mind is looking at all of these options, all of the wonderful experiences you've yet to allow, I would like you to imagine that the chair you're sat on is a time machine and we can go back freely through time and space as if time does not exist back to a time where a limiting belief was created. It may be a month ago, a year ago. It may be when you were five years old because a lot of those voices inside our head holding us back come from childhood, running these fears, exaggerating these fears, a voice that's no longer our voice holding us back. So whenever this time may be, know that you're going to go back with it now, safe with all the knowledge that you have, all the wisdom and everything that you now know to reassure that version of your younger you that everything will be okay and they can let go of those useless limiting beliefs and move forwards positively. In a moment, I'm going to click my fingers and you will travel back and you will notice a door, which I will ask you to walk through when you are ready. So, traveling back through time and space as if it doesn't exist, back to that moment in time where that limiting belief was created. Notice the door in front of you and get ready to walk through. I'd like to ask you to be brave, but also have the courage and safety in the knowledge that this will not affect you ever again and that you have all of the wisdom, all of the power that you have now to go back and address these issues. So when you are ready through that door, notice the room around you. Notice that younger version of yourself. Notice the scene playing out, the scene which you've been carrying negative beliefs about throughout this time throughout your past and you're no longer going to carry them with you into your future allow that version that younger version of you to hear anything they need to hear tell them anything you feel they'll benefit from knowing about how amazing you are now about your hopes and desires for the future the things that you are working towards and you will achieve so just take this moment and when you've told them everything they need to know, allow your head to nod. Yes, that's right. Perfect. 
Some people may take slightly longer than others, allow everything to come out to that younger version of you. And as you walk away back towards your door, give them one last hug and a wave goodbye, knowing that any of those useless and limiting beliefs that you've been carrying with you for however long it may have been, no longer exist. You're totally free from them, complete and utter reassurance. And then you're going to walk back through that door now and travel forwards in time and space to anywhere you desire to go. But notice wherever you are in the world or the universe or your imagination, the infinite possibilities, notice a river and notice what that river means for you. Notice its beauty and its power and how rivers begin at the source high up in a mountain, tiny, carving their way through rock. And notice how it flows. Notice that that is how you can continue on your journey through life. Notice that there's waterfalls, there's rocks, there's turbulence. If somebody walks through that river, it creates the mud and it murky, but then it settles. And feel that feeling now of settling into a calm, peaceful, beautiful, clear expanse of water. Wherever you are, picture it and feel it. Feel that calming sensation that the river brings with it, slowly, gently flowing through life. And walk over to that river, that clearing, with the water crystal clear like a mirror and look down at your reflection and notice it smiling back. Notice that confidence, notice it shining out from the water, reflecting back to you what you need to see, what others see about you, that beauty from within. And in that water, you can see it. You can see it clearer than you've ever seen before, clearer than any mirror you've ever looked at reflecting back from deep within you, your beauty, your desires, a future version of yourself. Allow that picture now to move forwards in time as far and as quickly as you wish to. Seeing anything that you need to see, feeling anything that you need to feel, making those decisions. And whilst you're doing that, I'd like to ask the part that's been running that protective mechanism, holding you back to pick a choice of the many options in your creative mind that you can come back to at any time you wish to. And I would like you to take one of those options. I'd like to ask that part to choose the one that it feels best for you right now to work towards your goals, your desires, your dreams right now. And then I'd like it to allow a signal to occur. That may be a nod of the head in agreement that you know it's right for you now, yes. Knowing that this is going to bring positivity into your life. Your confidence is increasing with every word I say. I can feel it, you can feel it, we can feel it. And I would like to ask that part to fully integrate that now into your life seamlessly, knowing nothing is holding you back. You have no limitations. You only have your dreams and desires and hopes for the future to work towards. Work towards them fearlessly, with confidence, with courage, to allow you freedom. And I'd like every other part of you to fully accept this new choice now, positively, with a profound knowledge, knowing that this is your future, your future desires. There's no point in reflecting back on the past. It doesn't exist. You're free from anything. You're free from that overprotective fear that has been doing its job. But now you can notice how calm your guard dog is, how happy he is in your home he's there with you he's part of your family notice your family notice the ones you love notice the feeling 
the warm, welcoming feeling now that you get greeted with when you're friends with that guard dog. He's there for you. He's there to be part of you, within you. I'd like you to just take a moment to take away anything that you need to, anything that you know that you're working towards now and feel that positivity increasing 10 times stronger, 20 times stronger, 100 times stronger. And I'd like you to see yourself where you are now, sat in your chair, and I'd like you to imagine the essence of you, your spirit, drifting up above your physical being, leaving it down below, drifting up high, above your house, looking down on your street below, up into the clouds, higher and higher, free, free from any restraints down below, free from your physical being, up into the atmosphere, noticing the earth below, noticing its beauty, the water, the forests, the mountains. You're high above them all now, floating freely. And I'd like you to look down and see an archery target and know that in the middle of that archery target, the bullseye, you can now place any remaining fears, useless and unnecessary limitations, fears, anxieties that you may have left, place them all in that bullseye now and notice it glowing brighter. Because in a moment, I'm going to shoot you through that bullseye like an arrow. I'm going to make the sound whoosh, and you will shoot through it. And I'm going to ask you to be brave because you may feel those feelings intensified, but only for a split second, and then they will be gone completely forever. So look down below, notice that bullseye, notice it glowing brightly and be brave, ready and whoosh. Take a look around you. Notice the feelings, the positivity, the anxiety, gone. Only a state of bliss remains, calm. And with that calm comes confidence. Notice that the target has shattered, glimmering gold speckles behind you. And now gather all of those thousands, millions of speckles of target into one ball of warmth and take that inside you and feel how that feels now and notice how empowering it is. You've turned any fear, any limiting belief, it's gone and now it's within you. Place it into your heart and feel it spreading out to your fingertips, down to your toes and feel it blissful, calm, confidence, a joy, a hope for the future. There are no negative feelings to be felt. I'd like you to allow yourself a moment to enjoy that, that feeling spreading throughout every fiber of your being at a cellular, molecular, neuron level, all of the changes being made like a light glowing through you with positivity. And now, I'd like you to imagine that you're on a cliff because we can remove all of those useless, unnecessary fears. But when it comes our time to step out of our comfort zone, we have to feel that fear. We have to overcome that fear, like jumping off a cliff. So I'd like you to picture it now, your cliff, and picture the sea below you. Notice that river. It ends at the sea, but the end is actually the beginning. The end of the river flowing freely joins the sea to take you anywhere that you want to go, anywhere in the land you can get to. But we're going to fly to freedom over the sea, to a place of perfect paradise. And I'd like you to know that within you, you have wings. So, I'd like you to imagine that you're on the edge of that cliff. Notice the sheer drop below, the waves crashing against the rocks. Feel that fear 
as if you were standing on the edge of that cliff. But know that you're safe. Know that in a moment, I'm going to ask you to jump. I'm going to count from one to three. Then I'm going to ask you to jump and you will feel it as if you were jumping off of a cliff. And then I will go whoosh. And that allows your wings to develop and fly you to freedom. So take one more look around you. Notice anything you need to notice. Feel anything that you need to feel. Feel that fear, embrace that fear because that fear drives us to excel. That fear drives us towards that next level, towards our success. And that's where we're going. So I'm going to ask you to be brave and one, feeling that fear. Two, knowing there's no turning back. And three, jump and whoosh. Feel that feeling, freedom, floating. Notice your wings. Notice how beautiful they are. Look at what they look like. They're unique to you. See what you need to see. Know that they came from within you and they are always there. Take a look around you. Notice the sea, the land below you as quickly or as slowly as you wish to. Fly to your very own version of freedom. Notice how nothing is holding you back now. Notice how it feels to be flying. Notice how peaceful it is up there, but also how exhilarating it is. You're in control of this journey. You're in control and you can go wherever you want to go. You just have to take that jump. And that jump is scary whilst you do it, but feel this feeling now and know that however much that fear intensifies before you jump, it will be gone. And in its place is a feeling that cannot be replaced by any other feeling in the world, the feeling of freedom. And with that freedom is a confidence, a confidence that you can access this, that you have this ability, you have those wings and you are flying to your very own freedom. I'd like you to just take a moment to enjoy this. I've brought you on this journey. You've overcome anything that you've needed to. And now take this moment to go wherever you want to go. See whatever you want to see. Notice those that you love around you. Notice all your future hopes and desires out there to be achieved, to be embraced. Notice how it feels from within. And I'd like you to slowly return back to where you are now in the room. And with your attention inwards towards everything that your mind has gone through on a subconscious level, while your conscious mind has done whatever it's needed to do at this time to switch off, to turn off those voices, to turn off our daily worries in life. And notice how the thoughts flow like dreams. Some you will remember strongly and some you may not. Your imagination is powerful and they may come back to you instantly. They may come back to you at any other time in your future when you need to access them, but they will be there in your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is powerful and it has everything that it needs. Everything is there waiting to take you towards your goals, your hopes, your dreams, your desires. And you have that freedom, that calm, that confidence within you. You have that courage to embrace that fear and you will achieve your desires. So in, I'm going to count from one to five and on five, your eyes will open and you will feel fantastic. So one, fully embracing any changes that you have made. Two, moving forwards fearlessly, fearlessly towards your goals. Three, with a determination unlike any other. And four, getting ready to return to the room. And five, eyes open, feeling fantastic. A 
I just noticed that Richard turned his camera off and that is a wonderful face to look at. <laughs> I think I noticed it halfway through, but subconsciously I was like, don't look at Richard's face, don't look at Richard's face. So I hope you all enjoyed that. And I'd just like you to pop the number below how you now feel towards that same goal and notice that the number has increased in confidence. So one is I can't do that. 10 is absolutely I'm taking action and I will achieve it. Thank you, Suzanne. Ah, oh, perfect. We have a 10. I love it. Obviously, you don't have to share with me what your goals are. They're unique to you. But if you feel like sharing with me what your goals are, I would be intrigued to know. But I have 100% faith that you're all going to go out there and achieve amazing things from this session. And so I would like to thank you for joining me. But I'm also super excited to see where you go from here now. I guess. And with regards to timing, that's pretty spot on between half past and quarter to two. It's 2.38, so I'm happy with that. Holding a group session. Oh, fantastic. Let me know when your group session is, Suzanne. I'd love to join. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you for joining. And Dawn. Thank you for that, Jess. It's lovely. Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. My scale went the other way, though. I was going from 10 being the worst to one. Oh, OK. Okay. okay. That's OK. So you, you, I guess you were scaling the fear opposed to the confidence. I'm not sure. But no, yeah, sure. as long as it's in, as long as you now feel less fear and more confidence. Mm. A lovely journey in Danish. Ah, I will buy a property for my teenage boys to set them on the property business. Oh, that's a wonderful goal! I love that. That's lovely. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Does anybody want to say anything? Or um... yeah, thank you very much, Jess. I'm I'm the same. I put a high number in. Uh, for the first number because that was my fear but then I've gone and put a higher number in because it was like a that was That's my okay. confidence so ignore my numbers if you know what I mean but I, I really enjoyed that thank you very much thank you it was excellent Jess I was gone I, d I didn't think I was going to come back so I thought I was <laughs> going to wonder I, I allowed you to stay there though because I was like if he wants to spend more time there he can spend more time there because I thought I was going to miss the the count out or the, you know, the, the outduction and whatever you want to call it. Cause I, I was so far gone. You probably saw my head was going. I felt my head go a few times, but that was excellent. Yeah. It was very, very good. I have no idea how long you, we were in transport, but it was great. It was about 25 minutes. I started oh. just, I, I think I started before 10 past. So it was yeah. absolutely excellent. Brilliant. Thank well you. done. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. It made me nervous. I was like, oh, Freddie's joining me. I I was, you must I was, get that quite a lot. Like... I was completely gone. I Trust me, I was, I was gone. It was fantastic. Thank really you. was. Yeah. I love your background as well. I oh, love thanks. Yeah, it was a picture my son, my son, Dean, Anthony's older brother took when he went to London. He, he works in London. He went in one morning and it was, a, I think it was the sunrise. It's a beautiful picture of the, I think it's the, I think it's the bridge i think it's um, yes it is oh it's a wonderful picture i love the colors as well very purple yeah. so so you took it and i said can i have it for a and i put it on my backdrop so yeah it's good becky how did you find it because you've never been hypnotized have you so i'm intrigued you don't have to answer you can put it in the chat if you like as well but or i'll message you after the session just because maybe she's still hypnotized <laughs> Hi Jess, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, uh, I would like to say it was it was really really beautiful, and what I loved, uh, uh, you know, with this puppy, and you know, my puppy was jumping in the beginning, like uh, back and forward, and as you said, barking, <laughs> and then you know, at the second part, I really, you know, just like I've seen it lying down with the. <laughs> There's the feet. It was really beautiful, and uh, the the special the cliff. Uh, it, it was amazing. Uh, I really 
felt like, you know, on the back of my head, it's just a pair of beautiful uh, wings just spread up. And, and it was the feeling, and, you know, I had tears. And I thought, oh, my God, just like my conscious mind was uh, observing. I thought, where did the tears come? Come on. And I thought, oh, this is the tears of happiness. It was really, really beautiful. I loved every moment. And I really didn't want to come back, didn't want to say anything. I just wanted to stay there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So oh, much. that's wonderful. It's I might have to really work something good. out with it to turn it into a longer relaxation session. Mm -hmm. I'll like to add something after the cliff, some form of deep. Can I, can I give you an idea yeah. for that one? The, yes, the something maybe. after the cliff? Because many years ago, there was a lady called Jill Edwards who, who and something I listen to quite often or used to and you go off on on some journey you choose whatever you want a balloon or I used to go on flying carpet but she would take you to an island in the middle of the sea where there was a castle and with a with a big courtyard and you would um, there would be people waiting to greet you, say maybe your higher self, or I can't quite remember what, what the people were, but you would land and then you would start to talk about what it was you did, what you wanted to do. So I, you know, I want to be a hypnotherapist and I want to have clients coming towards me. And you would imagine them coming towards the clients you wanted coming uh, and then you would talk to them and tell them what you wanted to do to them so it could be you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be clients it could be um you know sales you wanted to make or wh whatever it was you and you would say uh, you know i've i've you know i've got i want to do this with all my passion i say my love to you and 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 you and then eventually you come go back onto the carpet or get on your wings and fly back to where you've come from, waving them. But she always said, a warning at the end is, be careful what you ask for, because you could be overwhelmed with... So if you want 50 clients, ask for 50. Don't ask for 150. Yeah. Because it will happen. And funnily enough, at the time I was listening to it, I was, I was just starting my hairdressing career as self-employed. And... I never once worried about, I mean, that, I don't know why I'm like I am now about my hip, hypnotherapy, but I never once worried about not having enough clients because they always seem to come. And I would just do that. So that's quite, a, I mean, you, obviously you can make your own version of that, but it was quite nice because that's where I wanted to go when I was flying over the sea and I got to the island and I was talking to them and then... Um, and then they, you were calling me back, so I was just waving goodbye and coming back. I, I have a, I have a question, Jessica. Yeah. What cliff? The comfort zone. What cliff? I have no idea. I, 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 I don't remember anything about that at all. I was you, so far do gone. You, do you remember your wings at all, Freddie? No. I'll have I, to say. I don't remember you. any of that. I was, I, I was so I'll deep in the process. recording. If I, I, and that's why I said I, there were times when I thought I am just not going to hear that. I'm going to be here forever. I'm, I'm not even going to hear when you bring us back because I was there was times when I could hear you. And it, but I had no idea what you're talking about. Cliff. I can't remember any of that. But oh, that's wonderful. I, I, live, I know, you know, you know, I live right on the sea, sea here in East Yorkshire and the and the coast is eroding pretty rapidly. And I've got a picture. I'll send you a picture of this bench, it obviously at one point was in someone's garden or it was in a park somewhere, but the sea's gone so far back, this bench is right on the edge of the cliff. Wow. I took a photograph, it's still there. It's like, you know, like a bench you see in the park. I took a picture of it and I said, it's, it's kind of a, a resolution bench where couples go to, to resolve their problems. And either way, one goes over the cliff or they, they make up. But it, I'll send you the picture. I call it my, I call it a resolution bench. But I have no idea what you're talking about in way of cliff. I was so far gone. It was beautiful. It was I like, will teach you the protocol, Freddie. <laughs> well, I, I, that's I, my I, next step. My next step is to turn it into being able to teach it. Two next steps off of it. Okay. So I can put it into a session. I want to be able to teach it. And as we've just discussed now, I want to perhaps run a longer session into more of a relaxation at the end. 
I just need to work that part out. You know, I say to everyone before I hypnotize them, I say, you can listen if you want, but I don't mean this rudely. I'm, I'm not interested in your conscious mind because your unconscious mind will hear everything. So I have, I, I have no doubt that everything you said has gone in somewhere. And I don't have any fear. So whatever you said must be, must be, must have worked. Are you feeling confident? I'm absolutely confident. I, I'm steely determined and confident. Yeah, that's, that's going to happen. So we're mo moving from here. We're moving to Cumbria. And the goal is, that I first thing was that we've got these horrible teenage kids to take with us. And just, my well, youngest one's 18, the other one's 20. Um, and we thought we'd have to keep them with us forever. So my goal now is that we can buy a place which leaves me a bit of cash so I can buy them a place and say, look, here's the house, turn it into a million pounds or turn it into a pigsty. Either way, it's yours. Good luck. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I think it's, I'm hoping they'll take the opportunity, get something they can do up and just start on a property ladder. I don't know if you know Nick, who we spoke last night, the president, president, president last night, he's got, I don't know, it's 30, 40 properties. He's wow. 30, 35, 36 years old. Wow, that's he's got, incredible. He's got a vast property business. I wondered how old he was. I know I, I, I thought I thought he's a bit older than me, but he's not a lot older than me. No, and he's, he's very not. successful. But he is, he's a proper entrepreneur and he's done that off his own back. Mm. So he just bought a jailhouse, which is going to turn into kind of an Airbnb. So I've said to him, when I when this COVID's over, um, I'll go and visit him and stay in his jailhouse. It's a proper old kind of cowboy jailhouse with the bars and everything else. So I think it'd be really worth- um, I'm gonna take a quick screenshot before I forget. So everybody- I I've got my coat on, but I'm freezing. Did I get it? Yes, I did. There we go. Right, so thank you everybody for joining me. And oh, well I'll done, well done. That's your, that's your first big group out of the way. That is. Luckily, yeah. I, I actually am looking most forward to group sessions. There are no there limits. There are no limits. And no. I, I like running group sessions. I like I prefer running group kickboxing to group one-to-one uh, -one kickboxing. I think it will be the same. Not prefer, because I really do like doing one-to-one -one hypnosis. But I do think group sessions will be powerful because you can reach so many more people. Like everybody in the room today... And I probably will ask you all if you could just write a, a short testimonial or something, if you enjoyed it, if you're working towards your goal, um, just to help me get the word out there about group sessions, especially with the new year. It's kind of something to look into. But I know that I can help more people in the same amount of time through well, running group sessions. Give you a, a, a kind of incentive. The guy we work with down in Brazil a guy called Alberto uh, Della Sola. He did a Fred talk for us and he was on the trance aid. You probably saw him. He's a genius when it comes to social media. He's got 370,000 YouTube followers. Wow. He's a hypnotherapist, psychotherapist. And he took, took me and Anthony down there to run a conference. We had 150 students, but he runs online training. Just give you a, a kind of incentive and a bit of a, um, a goal to aim at. He charges $100 for his one-day training, but he has a 1,000 people on his training in one day. Wow. So that's 100 grand a day. See, Just I think my, my thing is finding all of these people. It's building up that following. If he, I only, I mean, I say I only, when I think about the amount of people who listen to what I say, it's in the few hundreds now. It's not in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, but, yeah yet but yeah. and then look honestly jess look and if any of you looking into to get into uh, online working online business look at alberto's fred talk look at his trance aid talk if you haven't looked at it look at it because he is the man and you've got you know he's just a genius but if you take on board what he says you'll increase your business online what's his name i'll write it down alberto della sola if you haven't looked at the trance aid um, he, he did a trance aid, all that money that we took for trance aid, it's nearly eight grand, uh, Jackie. I know you you watched it. It's close to eight grand now for Save the Children. And we're wow. going to try and get 10 grand for Christmas. So if you haven't done it, you can go to my website, look at trance aid, donate two quid. You don't have to. And, and then you, you just go to the website. Um, it's not the Facebook group. Trance aid supporters, all of the, all of the videos are there. 
and look at Alberto. And if you spent two quid to get to, to for save the children, you could just at your age you could turn that into two hundred thousand pounds. I have no doubt about it. Yeah. Because the only thing that's stopping us, you could if you do what you just did, then you could do that for a, for a thousand people. Yeah. And everyone would get a benefit from it. The the the, the next level of what we're doing as hypnotherapists is how to generate people onto it. That's a completely yeah. different skill, but it's something you could absolutely learn and become a genius at. But look at Alberto. He's doing it. He's not just talking it. He's doing it. But he's super active. So every day, like you're doing, he's doing a live. He, he talks about something. He's in your face all the time in a good way. So yeah. have a look. He's really... I, I think lives are so powerful. I think that's another thing that I want to run group sessions on, actually. Uh, everybody's getting the first announcement of this. It's not an upsell, not yet. But I, I do want to run group sessions to help people overcome the fear of going live because they are so beneficial in building that no like and trust factor. And it takes a long time. So especially, I think pretty much any, everyone in here, except for Becky, is a hypnotherapist and runs a business of some sort. So we're, lo we're looking for clients. We're looking to help people. So we need to build that rapport with them. So well, by going live, I, in my mind, there's no better way than doing that. Because I've got to go now. Thank you. Bye, Sarah. Okay, thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Um, what I was going to say to you is that if you look at your hypnotherapy business as a 40 hour a week, say you've got a job, you'd be working 40 hours a week. Yeah. When we first started as hypnotherapists, we're not in general doing 40 hours a week with, with clients. Nice. So if you look at your look at your business as a 40 hour a week business, if you're not got a client in a chair, if you're not actually doing work online, then you should be marketing. That's what I said. I think you should be doing, you know, if you're going to get this business where you want to go, you've got to say, if I'm only doing six hours therapy work a week, then I need to put 30 hours into my marketing, making videos, doing social media. If, and we, you have got the perfect model now, which we didn't have three or four years ago. And that is Laurie Hammond. Yeah. So if you just, you know, NLP, which you said you haven't studied, someone else said they have studied here. NLP started with Banda and Grinda and they just modeled excellence. So if they wanted to be a good kickboxer, they would model you right down to what you said when you stepped into the ring. So not just what you ate, what you, what you did exercise and what you said to yourself. And they did that with three therapists. But now you've got, we've got great people around you. And Bye just Glenn. Thank you for joining. So yeah. And if you've got, um, You've got great people around you and just go, what are they doing? How are they doing it? And most people will say, you know, come, come and watch me, come and do it. Because it's, if there's ever been a community which wants to help everyone else, it's this hypnosis community. You've seen from the presenters that come to come on this, on our creation thing, they, 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 they're giving their time great. You know, they, they, they're glad to give their time for you. And that's the joy of it. So, ask ask people you know how you how do you do that how do you get to those numbers how do i get someone in my chair and people will say this is how i do it and you can model people the other thing is that people always focus on the really big goal and the thing that they're working towards and get overwhelmed by getting there it's important to take the small steps and consistently do it well, that's, that was Nick's about. message last night, wasn't it? As well. I think, yeah, you know. it's such an important message, though, because yeah. it's easy to, I find anyway, being completely honest, you see really successful people. So that mm. being the product of the five people you associate with the most. And I would include both you and Laurie in my five, because okay. in the online world, I am with you nearly every day we connect i listen to everything you produce i listen to everything she produces it creates that connection and it can get overwhelming thinking oh it's okay for them they're really successful they they're doing it but it's finding out the first steps the smaller processes so like laurie's podcast she didn't begin with that and it's not yet where it's going to be. She mm. talks about it becoming a global bestseller. Like mm. podcast. It will be there. I believe that. She believes it. I believe it. But she would have begun nervous doing her first ever Facebook Live. She knows how that feels. But we're too quick to compare ourselves to the final product. 
the thing, the end, I mean, you've been doing it for 20 years, Freddie, like you said, where will I be in 20 years time? Exactly, yeah. And it's easy to think that, oh, well, I'm not there yet. Maybe I should just give up. And that's when people tend to give up. Like most people don't make black belt. Most people give up either at red belt. So the first belt or brown belt, the belt before black belt, because they feel like they've done enough to have accomplished something. But that final step is that step too much. That's yeah. the final test. You don't get there unless you keep going when it gets tough. And that's a message that I don't think is said enough. Like you said, um, Nick said it last night, and I'm going to keep talking about it too, because it's okay. It's fantastic to have the big goals. But like you said about the marketing, if you want those clients, it takes a lot of steps to get there. And then all of a sudden it all pays off and you realize, hey, I'm there and I'm successful. How did that happen? Because yeah. I had it with becoming a champion. It was a case of keep doing the training, keep getting the losses, keep getting punched in the face, but keep going. Everything added up in the end. It was, oh, wow, I did it. This it's is why I said, I don't know if you sat in on that, um, that the, the evening one I talked about failure, fear of failure, but we should, we should be looking at it in a different way. We should be seeking out failure. We should make it our ally because it's the moment of failure that we're going to grow. We can all stay in our comfort zone, but yeah. we should be looking at it as an ally, as, as something we're working towards. We're looking for it. If, you're not, if you don't find it, then you're not working hard enough, <laughs> if you don't understand what I'm saying, because it's, it's in that moment of failure that we grow and we learn. So, so rather than being afraid of it, we should turn it into our ally and say, yeah, I'm going to push this to, to failure. And then you can move further on. You know, and the only, only thing I would say to you, Jess, and I'd say to anyone starting out, especially online, is be yourself. Trust that you're good enough because people, if you're authentic, because if you're not, it comes across. And we know people like they're trying to do this work and you know that's not who they really are. I'm they're always me. Love. I'm always honest. I they just go on. With love and peace and everything else, but you know somehow you know that's not who they really are. So yeah. be authentic and just be yourself. Trust that you're a good enough person and do everything you do from your heart passionately and people get it. And I say that, but some people, not everyone's going to get you. Yeah. But you have to accept that. You know, we've got to just keep believing in our message, keep believing in what we're doing, keep that, keep that long goal in sight and have the little steps to where we're going to go. You've got, you had 14, 15 people on here today. That's the result. Yeah. No, I'm really pleased with that. It's oh, interesting it as well that I did have that many people because in my live, I said, I've got about 15 people booked in. And in my head, I was going, have you? Have you actually got 15 people booked in? What if that's not the truth? And I was like, no, no, have faith with that number. Because I was like, because honesty is my biggest core value, honesty, courage, and freedom. And after I'd said 15, I was like, I better get 15 now. It came from somewhere in my subconscious. And that was what I ended up doing. So I'm grateful. Well, yeah. I've, tur I've, I've turned Jess's poem into an anthem for our little creative body group. And I'm, I've just got to work on it a little bit, a bit, a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I, I think we'll all be singing it by Christmas. And it's Jess's words and my kind of music to it. But it's really inspiring. I think if we, we would just listen to it a couple of times a day. Uh, if you haven't seen the poem, then look online, you'll see it. But now, I've got, now we've got a song to it. And when you... Once you listen to it music, it gets stuck, doesn't it? That's the whole thing. It's becoming an, like an earworm. And you find yourself just saying the words all the time. I so, love what you've done with it. I think it's incredible. Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you can see I don't do anything else but sit around in my hat. <laughs> you look really cold. I, I'm in <laughs> my office. And I don't know why, but it's freezing. And I've been here for a couple of hours now. That's why I put my coat on, because I wanted to really enjoy the hypnosis. And the gym I did. was so yeah. cold earlier. We were down there for a one-to-one -one and it was so cold. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was great. Thanks, Jess. Yep. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Well done. Top marks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining and have a lovely day. I'll see you later, Richard. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.